Hello and welcome. This will be my first time creating a video for educational purposes. So if anything is unclear or you have questions, please leave comments and I will try to answer them and hopefully improve in the next video. I chose to start my videos with this image since it presents the particular challenge of tattoo removal. This would be a more advanced version of skin retouching as we have to replace large areas of skin to remove the tattoos. For this process of tattoo removal, I like to use a combination of three tools. Spot healing brush, patch tool, and clone stamp. Each tool presents a different capability and presents different results. For thinner lines and smaller areas of tattoos, I like to use the spot healing brush since it is a quicker tool and can kind of intelligently figure things out on its own. It doesn't require me to constantly go back and find an area for it to reference like the clone stamp does. The problem with this tool is that the details and the texture aren't preserved as well as if you were using the clone stamp. Um, but it does blend a little bit better when it comes to tonality. Now, a more extensive process would be using the clone stamp as it preserves detail better, um, but it will perfectly transfer wherever you are referencing from. So if that area skin is lighter, it'll look weird in a darker area. So sometimes it can be difficult to find a proper area to reference and you kind of have to mix and match the tools, maybe clone stamp a bit, and then also use the patch tool to bring tonality back. In this particular area where I'm working on the tattoo in this lower thigh area, I'm using a combination of the spot healing brush and the clone stamp. I use the clone stamp to preserve the detail of the texture in the leg and I used the spot healing brush because there's this sharp and dramatic change from light to dark which the spot healing brush I feel can manipulate better and preserve that value change and tonality change. In this area here, where the tattoo is underneath the webbing of the lingerie, I mostly exclusively used the clone stamp tool and not the spot healing brush because the webbing in its almost pure black color can easily confuse the spot healing brush and cause weird tonality issues in this very tight area. So just using the clone stamp tool and carefully referencing the small areas you have to work with, you just gradually cover over the tattoos. So here you'll begin to see me use the patch tool. The patch tool works very well in more open areas and larger areas of the skin such as this part where it's in the rib cage area. The benefits of the patch tool is that it preserves detail fairly well but will use intelligent blending like the spot healing brush. Uh, you don't want to use it too close to another um, object or area that you don't want to affect such as in this picture, if I use too close to the lingerie or the blue fabric, it would try to blend the black or blue with the skin tone and I would end up with weird tones and transitions. Now, the editing did not turn out perfect when I got done removing the tattoo from the skin. There was some weird tonality, but I had in mind that I would fix this later on in another process of my editing.
So this is the step in my editing process where I fix tonality issues that I have in the skin or backgrounds wherever there might be a tonality problem. The process I use is called frequency separation. This essentially brings the colors and tones onto one layer and brings your detail onto another layer. So you can essentially move around the colors and smooth out transitions without losing as much detail. Now it's not perfect and you will have some detail loss in this process if you're not careful. But I found it very effective if used properly. You can see here I'm fixing the problems that I had removing the tattoo around the rib cage and smoothing out the transitions in tonality. So this frequency separation technique I actually created into an action that will automatically separate the layers for me and make it easier for me to work into my workflow. I made this action through following another person's tutorial which I will link in the video description below. After frequency separation, I do another step of bringing more detail into specific areas such as the eyes or fabric and little details that I want to pop out. It's essentially using frequency separation again, but in a different way. I'm only using the detail layer and gradually bringing that in with a mask into specific areas. So this is the step in my process where I bring in the liquify tool. I bring that in after all my general retouching and detail enhancing has been finished since I will be pushing around pixels essentially in this part of the editing process. I use this to modify either unflattering folds or twists in the skin that might be caused by a certain pose or create more drama in the body lines. Essentially, we want the silhouette to have curves and dynamic lines that bring interest to the viewer's eye. We don't want to go way out of proportion and create things that aren't completely unbelievable, but we can enhance and make things more interesting. While pushing and pulling the model, you want to be aware of how you're affecting the background around her. You don't want to, say, take a straight edge of a window or pipe and all of a sudden move that so that it has a bend in it. That brings attention to that area and that you've obviously modified that part of the model. This is the step in my editing workflow where I try to enhance the shadows and highlights of the image. Rather than trying to paint in light sources that don't exist, I try to make sure to accomplish all the lighting that I need in camera through my strobes or natural lighting. But with this process, we can enhance uh, areas of highlights or shadows that didn't quite get the full effect that we were aiming for, or just to bring more contrast to the tonality. I do this by creating two layers of curves, one for shadows and one for highlights. I then apply a solid black mask to both and gradually paint in the areas where I want this effect to come through in the photo.
So this is the final step in my editing workflow. It's the color grading part. This will essentially bring a new feel or atmosphere to your image. For this particular image, I used a technique that I found in another person's tutorial, which I will link below, but essentially we're using curves with separate channels to affect red, blue, and green. This allows me to bring more warmth to highlights and cools to the shadows, and this will bring a warmth and cool separation between the subject and the background. This has a very cinematic or illustrative quality and really fits with my style. And here is the final image. I hope you all enjoyed this overview of my editing workflow and any techniques that I referenced in this video, like I said, I will link below in the video description. Hopefully this was informative and if you have any questions, like I said, leave them in the comments below. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you have any ideas on how I might improve it, please leave them in the comments below or email me.